Hello and welcome to our God's Word for Today devotional today. And we pray that this will be a blessing to us as we read and meditate on God's Word. Let me read to us our text for today in Proverbs chapter 5, verses 7 to 14. And now, O sons, let's listen to me and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her. Do not go near to the door of her house, lest you give your honor to others and your years to the merciless. Lest strangers take the feel of your strength, and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. And at the end of your life you groan, when your flesh and body are consumed. And you say, How I hated discipline, and my heart despised reproof. I did not listen to the voice of my teachers, or incline my ear to my instructors. I am at the brink of utter ruin in the assembled congregation. Let's beware of the cause of regret. Solomon calls all the sons here, and he collectively calls all the sons to pay attention to him and his words. It's not only for his son, but he said, sons, plural, in verse 7. It's important to distinguish that these people or these sons might be hearing but not listening. There's a difference between listening and hearing. At times, people are hearing instructions, but they are not listening. Look at how Solomon really emphasize this in verse 7. And now, O sons, listen to me and do not depart from the words of my mouth. And he emphasized here and reiterated again the futility of giving in to sin because giving in to sin is always at our losing end. There is no winning when we sin. It's always a loss. As somebody says, sin will take you farther than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay, and it will cost you more than you want to pay. Sin will promise, but he will deliver us pain and misery at the end. There is a way that seems right unto a man, and he doesn't know that the end of it is destruction. And this quote is sadly quoted by Rabbi Sikores, and we know what happened to him, and that's why it should break in us some kinds of fear and trembling that if it happened to him, we are not immune also that it can happen to us. Look at how Solomon warned the sons, naive sons, immature and inexperienced to really take note how devastating sin is in verse 8 to 11. Let me read it again. Keep your way far from her and do not go near to the door of her house lest you give your honor to others and your years to the merciless. Lest strangers take your feel of your strength and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. And at the end of your life you groan when your flesh and body are consumed. The scenario here should cause us to tremble for the thought that nobody is so strong against temptation. And Solomon is a classic example because he said this, but at the end of his life, he regretted. Running away from temptation is the best solution. There's no other alternative better than staying away from it. Stay away as far as we can from the door of sin. Sin capitalizes the weakness of our flesh. So in other words, we have really this kind of trouble and we cannot evade this because we are still in our flesh. What I mean is that although we who trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, we are not enslaved by sin anymore. But this flesh that we have still is weak. And this is where sin capitalizes. Sin, like a hungry monster coming from caves, is just like that. It's merciless. It will devour us. It destroys our honor and strength. Look at how Solomon described this, that the future of a young man, naive, 
succumbing or embracing sin, he has no future at all. He will give his honor to others, his years to the merciless, and his strength will be devoured by strangers and he will be exhausted. It destroys his honor, strength, so that at the end of his life, he's feeling groaning and being consumed. And maybe you can think of many people you know where you are and in your in your family of uh, or friends that circle of friends that you know at the beginning they were good but because they indulge in so much sin and they ended up miserable and you see people like this realize at the end but the effects already irreversible there is an irreversible slide towards regret the realization of one's mistake is too late for him to rectify a sigh of regret and remorse is inevitable. It's sad to read verse 12 down to verse 14. And you say how I hated discipline and my heart despised reproof. There is an acknowledgement now that he hated discipline. In contrast, those who love the Lord, he will feel that his commandments are not burdensome. His commandments are, are not something to be afraid of. If somebody hated or hates discipline, he will evade and he will escape from following God's will. And in verse 13, Solomon said, This realization led him to say, I did not listen to the voice of my teachers or incline my ear to my instructors. He re realized that he wasted the time to listen to wisdom from his parents, his teachers, and those who are mature to teach him how to live. And he said in verse 14, I am at the brink of utter ruin in the assembled congregation. What will happen is that he will just experience at the end of his life shame and embarrassment and a loss, a sense of loss. I pray that it will not happen to me and it ha will not happen to you. And we cannot handle this by our own selves. It's only by the grace of God. The grace of God that's save us, must sustain us, must separate us, must strengthen us. Let's pause for a moment today and ask these questions in our heart. Honest question in our heart. Am I in a compromising situation right now? Am I sensitive and is listening to the warning from God? Am I listening to my conscience? Is my conscience clean? Do I have a soft heart or sensitive heart before God? Do I need to repent? If we know that there's something we do that we need to repent and settle with God, let us bring this all to God because if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. And he will remove our sins as far as the east is from the west. So far, he will remove our sins away from us. Let's search our hearts and allow the Spirit to minister to us today. May his word will continue to minister to, in our lives today. And we will look back and say, Lord, thank you that you have led us, led me. That I don't have a regret, Lord. I spend my day doing your will. I did the best that I can. I know I will. I'm not perfect, but your grace sustains me. I know that it was you and your grace that sustains me today. Let us pray. Thank you so much, Lord, for a stern warning, Lord, from Solomon about the importance of not hating discipline, listening to your word, and even for others whom you are using or whom you have used, Lord, to teach us and impart to us these wonderful principles and wisdoms of life. Lord, help us not to live a life leading to such regret, Lord. Help us that our lives today will you keep that we will not slide towards the deceitfulness of sin and hardness of our hearts. Lord, thank you that you cleanse us. Thank you that you can give us a new start. Thank you that you will live our past you will remember, remember our sins no more and that we can have a new start even today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.